Hi everyone, my name is Richard. I am a senior software engineer at Google Cloud. And today I'm excited to talk to you about how you can accelerate your Gen AI model inference with Ray and Kubernetes. Over the past year, we're seeing a lot of growth in large models in the field of uh, generative AI. And this has enabled organizations to apply AI and solve problems that they weren't able to solve before. And this in turn is uh, driving large and lar larger models. And over the past few years, we're seeing orders of magnitude growth in the size of these models. Uh, so this uh, basically means that the organizations have to adopt technologies that allows them to serve models in a performant and uh, cost-effective manner. So uh, Google has been an industry leader in the field of AI. And uh, with products like Maps, Search, YouTube, etc., there are a lot of large models running underneath these services. So over the past uh, decades, Google has uh, built a lot of uh, specialized hardware uh, specifically tailored for machine learning applications. Uh, now, one of these is uh, Tensor Processing Units, which is uh, TPUs. Uh, we recently introduced uh, V5 of TPUs, which is the latest generations of TPUs. And in doing so, we want to uh, allow our customers to have the uh, same access to the, the uh, transformative technologies that has uh, enabled Google in its uh, products and services. So the two main benefits of TPUs are efficiency and scalability. So let's take, take a look at uh, efficiency. Uh, in this graph, we're comparing the V5 TPUs with their previous generation, the V4 TPUs. And over the horizontal axis, we're seeing how uh, the V5 uh, TPUs perform on various uh, generative AI models. And in the, hor in the vertical axis, we're seeing the uh, relative inference performance per dollar. So as you can see, uh, over the range of these models, the uh, V5 TPUs are demonstrating up to 2.5 times more throughput per dollar for generative AI model. Next, we're going to look at scalability as a main benefit. Uh, TPUs have a special topology and uh, as well as a uh, high bandwidth memory, uh, which allows them to uh, work either in unison or in combination with other TPU sizes. Uh, so in this table, we're demonstrating how this uh, relates to uh, how it, it serves the different kinds of models. Um, you can see that uh, with a one V5 TPU chip, you can serve uh, a 13 billion Lama 2 model. Uh, however, you can scale that up. You can uh, scale up to 256 chips which allows you to serve up to uh, 2 trillion parameter models. Um, in addition, uh, multi-slice technology allows near linear scaling with uh, these models. So you can uh, really uh, utilize uh, TPUs to serve your, your largest generative AI models. So now let's shift gears a little bit. Um, at the hardware layer, we have seen how TPUs can optimize your inference performance. But what about the application layer? So uh, distributed computing is needed across various stages of ML. And at uh, each stage of your ML pipeline, like for training, model serving, and so on. And over the years, each stage and level is uh, creating its own distributed computing solution. So you have a different uh, technical stack for, for training, for serving, et cetera. And this adds uh, further complexities into the ecosystem. Now enters Ray. So Ray is an OSS platform uh, that's uh, a universal distributed computational framework across various stages of ML. Now Ray is really great at scaling. It allows you to scale from a single machine to a multi-node cluster with minimal code changes. And uh, the Ray AI runtime library is specifically designed for ML applications. 
and supports uh, uh, specialized libraries specifically for training, model serving, uh, reinforce, reinforcement learning, hyperparameter search, and so on. So let's take a look inside a ray cluster. A ray cluster is an abstraction. It allows you to scale workloads to multiple workers and devices. A cluster consists of a single head node, uh, as well as a number of worker nodes. Uh, Ray supports auto scaling. So um, if the uh, head node, uh, if, if needed, the head node will launch uh, more workers as required by the workload. Uh, you can create a Ray cluster either locally, uh, just on your laptop, or remotely on a distributed cluster. So this allows uh, you to scale an application uh, across various uh, hardware platforms. Uh, let's take a look at uh, how Ray handles a uh, Ray uh, handles a um, model inference. So here we have a snippet of a code that's a very simple Ray serve deployment. Uh, step one is uh, you define this uh, inference class. Uh, this is just a, a, a Python class that uh, wraps around your model. Uh, you can define an init method, which uh, initializes the model state. Uh, so obviously in real world scenarios, uh, this could be a very large neural network. And then um, you define this uh, call method, which uh, returns an inference result uh, based on the request. So second step is that you uh, deploy this, uh, this model to your Ray cluster. And this can be done in a single line. Um, you bind your model and uh, you send it to, to the Ray serve library. And uh, under the hood, this uh, schedules a Ray actors and tasks that's required to uh, bring out this model and allows it to serve uh, HTTP requests and opening up the port. Uh, the third step is actually querying the deployment and uh, fetching back the result. So uh, why is Reserve good for generative AI? Uh, first of all, it is a framework agnostic inference library in Python. Uh, it has a rich Pythonic uh, experience and uh, it supports uh, any uh, popular deep learning net, uh, framework, such as uh, PyTorch, TensorFlow, scikit-learn, cognitive-based, et cetera. And um, a, a great advantage of using Rayserve is um, it's good for model composition. So when we think of ML models, uh, we don't really deploy models in isolation. So the models need to interact with the greater uh, ecosystem in order to be useful. So this could be um, other models. This could be business logic. This could be some database, right? So you need um, some way to integrate your models with the, your uh, business uh, ecosystem. And uh, Rayserve allows you to build complex inference service with multiple models with great ease. And it allows uh, you to uh, compose models together uh, and handle uh, complex scenarios such as uh, different um, model versioning and different uh, deployment graphs. Um, it is built on top of Ray, so it is very easily scalable. So your serve instance, can uh, uh, you, you can scale up uh, replicas uh, according to the request load. So all of this makes uh, Ray serve a great choice for serving generative AI models. So let's take a minute to put it all together. Uh, at the hardware layer, we have seen how TPUs can optimize uh, the performance of your models at, at a very efficient cost. Uh, in addition, TPUs are also uh, very scalable. Um, on the other end, uh, for the application layer, we look at how Ray can simplify building and deploying AI workloads. So Ray has a really simple Pythonic uh, interface uh, that is well integrated with uh, a rich ecosystem with uh, frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, Hawking Face, et cetera. 
And this allows you to easily distribute your AI application to a distributed cluster. And uh, because of this simple interface, you can deploy an application from your laptop to a cluster with uh, very little changes to your code. Uh, Ray also supports auto scaling, which uh, abstracts away the underlying resources. And this really allows the ML engineer to focus on developing the AI, AI application um, instead of uh, worrying about um, how to orchestrate resources. And specifically, Ray has this uh, AI runtime, which uh, contains a number of uh, applications and libraries, including RayServe, uh, which uh, supports uh, features such as automatically building uh, inference graphs. So all of this makes Ray an ideal platform for uh, ML engineers to develop their applications. But you need something to tie the two together. So what about problems like uh, managing uh, resource life cycles, orchestrating resources? Or what about the production uh, level problems like security, monitoring, observability? So this is where Kubernetes comes in. So Kubernetes is a great OSS uh, platform that has a, a very uh, ecosystem uh, friendly and uh, it's uh, very uh, flexible and offers a uh, great performance and scale. It really uh, allows you to uh, tie together the uh, application side improvements of Ray with the uh, uh, hardware side performance offered by TPUs. And we're going to take a look at um, how Kubernetes makes all this happen. So now let's see how all of this works on Kubernetes. So since TPUs are special uh, designed for machine learning workloads, uh, they work a little differently from traditional GPUs. Uh, so if you have uh, deployed GPU workloads on Kubernetes before, you know you can create a uh, VM with the GPUs attached to them. And then uh, a Kubernetes pod would reserve uh, some number of GPUs on that pod. So uh, TPUs are topology aware, which means that uh, they have to be deployed on uh, node pools that are also topology aware. Um, in addition, the nodes must be connected with a high bandwidth memory, which is what gives them that uh, high uh, performance uh, throughput. Uh, so from the workloads perspective, uh, we de deploy each uh, Kubernetes pod on a TPU node. And this uh, TPU nodes contains a number of uh, TPU chips. Uh, in addition, a workload uh, had to be co-scheduled together on the topology so, the work so that the uh, workload is also topology aware. So um, to help all of this, uh, here's a diagram of uh, how we can uh, deploy Ray on the TPUs. Uh, here we're showing that the, the Ray head is running on a CPU VM, and uh, each Ray worker is running on a TPU host. And because of this, uh, this is all part of the same uh, topology, each uh, worker in this uh, cluster has to be aware of uh, where the other workers are. Uh, they had to be initialized with uh, an environment which uh, contains uh, metadata about that topology. So in this case, uh, this is a four node topology uh, with uh, uh, four chips each. Uh, so each worker is uh, initialized with uh, one unique index which identifies them uh, in that topology. And uh, they're also uh, initialized with the host names of uh, all the other workers in this uh, in the same topology so to help all of this uh, happen uh, in kubernetes we uh, make use of uh, kubray which is a open source operator for uh, orchestrating ray workloads on kubernetes uh, it is currently uh, developed by uh, the community and uh, here we are showing uh, this uh, snippet from uh, a kubray spec uh, so uh, Kubray defines a custom resource for uh, representing Ray clusters. So in uh, this part, which uh, we're showing the 
it's a part of the spec for deploying a ray worker. So you can see that the ray worker is reserving four TPU VMs, uh, for four, four TPUs. And um, it's uh, the, the node selector specifies that it should be running on a specific topology as well as a accelerator type. So now let's uh, see how uh, you can run a TPU workloads. So uh, here we are showing some uh, snippet of the code for running a very simple TPU workload. Uh, we start by initializing the ray cluster and uh, we define this uh, function, which uh, by adding this one line, we indicate that this is a remote function. Uh, so uh, each uh, uh, worker is going to reserve four TPUs. And inside this function, we import the JAX library and we exercise some workload. And uh, outside of this, we send uh, non-blocking calls, uh, which uh, ensures that the same work is uh, being run on all the workers. And this is how you uh, this is how the multi-controller uh, programming model works. So now let's talk about how we can operationalize all of this. Right. So let's see if uh, you're deploying this in your production environment. What kind of problems uh, might you run into? Well, first of all, how do you deploy these clusters at scale? How do you provision them in a way that is uh, reproducible? And second, um, how do you protect your services from um, outside access, unauthorized access? And uh, additionally, how do you grant uh, fine grain access to uh, members of your team, right? Um, you may want to use uh, logging to see what's going on with your jobs and your actors and your nodes. Uh, if you are the system administrator, maybe you're interested in metrics about the system from a workload agnostic point of view, like being able to view your resource utilization across a system. Right. So for all of this, you may need to uh, have a uh, ready to deploy out of box integration with other managed cloud services. Uh, so we provided this uh, GitHub link. Uh, you can download this. And this is a, a solution template for deploying Ray on GKE. So we have uh, included um, out of box integration with uh, GPU and TPU clusters. We have included a Kubernetes operator for you to orchestrate your Ray workloads. And we've uh, enabled some integration with IAP, uh, cloud logging, and Prometheus monitoring. And in addition, we've also included a Jupyter Notebook server, which enables you to interact with the cluster uh, for easy prototyping. So this brings us to our first demo. Uh, which is uh, serving stable diffusion with Jupyter on TPUs. So this is using the uh, solution template that I've just talked about. Uh, stable diffusion is a text-to-image generative model. Uh, for this demo, we'll be using uh, stable diffusion v 4 And uh, you can uh, see the source of the uh, the model at the, at the link. And this will be uh, deployed on a Kubernetes cluster with a single Ray cluster. Uh, where the worker is deployed on a single host TPU. And in the same Kubernetes cluster, we will have a Jupyter notebook, which enables you to, uh, to interact with uh, the Ray cluster easily. So now let's see the demo. Okay, so now let's use Terraform to deploy the solution that I have just talked about. So this will deploy a Ray cluster in GKE and it will include a uh, TPU worker on a single host, uh, as well as a Jupyter notebook uh, for us to interact uh, with uh, the Ray cluster. Uh, so let's see how we're doing. So let's check the status of the pods. OK, so you can see that the, uh, this spun up a Ray cluster with a head and a worker. And the worker is deployed on a single host TPU. Uh, now let's get the service endpoint for uh, the Jupyter server that we're uh, going to use. Uh, that's this uh, IP address. So first of all, we're going to install Ray in the Jupyter notebook. 
Uh, since this Jupyter notebook is deployed in the same Kubernetes cluster as the Ray cluster, we can just use the uh, Ray cluster's uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster IP endpoint to talk to it. So this uh, this means that we don't have to expose the Ray cluster endpoint to the internet. Uh, we're going to initialize the Ray cluster as well as install some dependencies like the JAX TPU library as well as uh, transformers. Uh, this is the ingress class. Basically, this just uh, tells Ray how to route your request. This next part is the actual stable diffusion model. And you can see that uh, we're specifying the resource requirements on each replica, which is four TPUs. So this will uh, bind the actual model and start the serving instance. So while this is running, let's take a look at the Ray dashboard. Uh, this dashboard helps us look at the status of each job. Uh, you can check out the, uh, the surf uh, instance, which has been started. Uh, you can also look at the cluster states and uh, look at each actor and uh, view metrics and logs. So our serp instance should be started. Now we're going to send an HTTP request to the serp endpoint. The serp endpoint in this case is also using the same Kubernetes uh, endpoint as before. And you can see that we are sending a list of uh, text prompts now for the images that we're going to generate. Okay, let's send the request and wait for it to finish. All right, let's see how well we did. So these are the images that our prompt generated. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we just saw how we can use Jupyter Notebooks to interact with our Ray cluster. Now let's do something a little different. Now we're going to deploy a server and client architecture using gRPC. gRPC is a uh, uh, open source uh, RPC library uh, originally created by Google. And this, uh, we're going to uh, also deploy stable diffusion. Uh, with a single head and the worker. Uh, this time, just for fun, we're going to deploy the uh, model on GPUs instead of TPUs. And for the server side, uh, this will also be run on the Ray cluster, but this time we'll use the, a gRPC server endpoint in the Ray server deployment. And on the client side, we'll use a Python uh, client library to uh, send gRPC requests and stream the response back. And uh, hopefully, this will work out great. Let's take a look. Okay, so for this demo, let's uh, start by defining the protos. Now let's take a look at the proto class. This is fairly straightforward. Uh, for the stable diffusion request, we're simply re including a string for the prompt. And for the response, this is just a uh, stream of bytes for the picture that we generated. And the stable diffusion service just exposes a single RPC call, which generates a picture based on the prompt. Okay. So now using this uh, proto file, uh, we're going to generate the, uh, the PB2 files uh, using the Python gRPC tools. So this is a single command. And this generated these couple of files. So now we're going to use the uh, uh, write the main body of the stable diffusion model. Uh, this is going to be fairly similar to uh, what we did before, uh, but with a couple of differences. First, we're importing the stable diffusion uh, protos that we have just generated uh, for gRPC as well as just be a proto. Uh, next, uh, this serve deployment is going to use a single GPU as opposed to a TPU. Uh, the rest of the class is uh, fairly straightforward. 
let's just expose the generate method and save the responses to the, uh, the file stream. And finally, this is going to start a uh, raise serve instance on the uh, gRPC port. And let's uh, submit this job. Uh, first, I'm going to expose the uh, Ray address uh, by setting it as an environment variable. Uh, this is the IP of the cluster that we've just uh, deployed. Okay, next I'm going to submit the Ray job to the same point. And this is going to package up the local working directory and use the stable diffusion model as the entry point. Uh, this is starting the gRPC server. It's going to add a replica to the deployment. Okay, this uh, finished pretty quickly. So now let's take a look at the test file. We're using this to send a gRPC request to the endpoint that uh, we have just deployed. Uh, this is going to use the same environment variable to get the ray address. Uh, it's going to send a single prompt. And uh, the response will be written to a local file. So now let's uh, take a look. OK. So this finished, and let's take a look at the result. OK, that's pretty good. So we have just seen a couple of demos on how you can use a reserve to accelerate your Gen AI models on Kubernetes. So now I want to take a minute and talk about what's coming next. So we have shown how you can serve a single host model uh, using TPUs on Kubernetes. Uh, but as I previously mentioned, you can actually combine multiple TPU slices together, and uh, this will allow you to serve uh, large and larger models. So this requires us to uh, utilize the uh, autoscaling capabilities of Kubernetes as well as Ray. So in the coming months, we will be supporting autoscaling TPU pods, which allows you to scale models up to trillions of parameters. Um, in addition, we will be adding more production support for uh, running Ray in Kubernetes, uh, such as better observability, uh, enhancements to security, and fault tolerance. So I look forward to seeing you again. And thank you very much for coming today.